This video is kindly sponsored by Conflict of Nations, the free online PvP strategy game. Hey, 42 here. They say that necessity is the mother of all invention. And never is there a greater need than in times of war. That's why periods in history that have seen large amounts of conflict have traditionally catalyzed huge leaps forward in technology. The First World War saw tanks trundle onto the world's battlefields for the first time. And the Second World War saw the invention of the jet engine, as well as the harnessing of nuclear power. This process began literally thousands of years ago, and it's still ongoing today. Which is why the battlefields of tomorrow will undoubtedly look very different to the ones you and I grew up learning about in history class. As of right now, the world's superpowers are piling billions of dollars into a new generation of military technology that wouldn't look out of place in the latest sci-fi blockbuster. I'm talking Predator-style adaptive camouflage, hypersonic missiles that can strike targets on the other side of the globe in a matter of minutes, laser cannons that can slice projectiles right out of the sky, cyborg insects that can infiltrate enemy encampments with ease, and enhanced reality goggles that will make fighting a war look like playing a computer game. With futuristic technologies like these appearing on the distant, and in some cases not so distant, horizon, we humans will soon have to accept an uncomfortable truth. We're starting to become the weak link in warfare. And you can experience realistic modern warfare in Conflict of Nations, which puts you at the heart of global modern warfare, allowing you to choose a real country to lead in epic battles in a bid to take over the world. You fight with up to 128 other players in real-time combat that can take weeks to complete. This game will test your ability to manage your units, such as tanks, jets, attack helicopters, and submarines. What I love about this game is the importance of the realistic in-game economy and how it affects the long-term outcome of a war. You have to carefully choose when and how to attack to maximize your chances of victory. It's also really handy that I can sign into my account on both PC and mobile, meaning I can take the action with me wherever I am. So click the link in the description to get an exclusive gift, 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. The offer is only available for 30 days, so hurry. 500 years ago, the strength of a man's arm was a huge factor in his prowess on the battlefield. Great warriors had the skill and charisma to turn the tide of battle, and in some cases even decide entire wars. These days, with our technology doing pretty much all the killing, the people controlling it are turning into a bit of an afterthought, and in some cases, even a liability. We simply weren't built for war on a modern scale. I mean, think about it. We're relatively small, fragile animals, trying to hold our own on battlefields full of metal monsters capable of unleashing casual destruction at the push of a button or the pull of a trigger. And it isn't just our relative squishiness that's the problem. Most human beings perform pretty poorly in high-stress situations. The more pressure we're put under, the more likely we are to make mistakes. We get tired quickly, meaning we need to be unconscious and therefore defenseless for large portions of every day in order to remain effective. We need to eat and drink regularly or we die. And we're only able to operate in a relatively narrow range of atmospheric conditions and temperatures before we just shut down. We get sick fairly easily, we die if you dunk us into water for too long, and we turn into horrible little monsters if you feed us after midnight. Oh, sorry, that last one's gremlins, isn't it? Anyway, what I'm trying to say is this. As fantastic as our human militaries are, military technology grows more proficient at annihilating enemies every year, making human soldiers increasingly obsolete as a consequence. One way to circumvent this inherent human fallibility is to just go full technology and let the machines wage war for us. As scary as that may sound, there's a good chance it's already happening. A UN Security Council report published last year 
appeared to suggest that anonymous AI-controlled drones took actual human lives on the battlefields of Libya in 2020. And that's almost certainly just the thin end of the wedge. As AI continues to improve, killer machines could well become a military mainstay. But there is one way to remove human fallibility from the warfare equation without actually removing the humans. One that's being explored by governments all over the world right now. We can simply stop humans from being fallible in the first place. From the wheel to the steam engine to quantum computers, technologies are tools that we use to make our lives better. But our understanding of science is reaching a point where we can begin to consider not only how we can keep making better tools, but how we can make ourselves better tools. In 2018, Chinese scientist He Zhang Kui edited the DNA in embryos of a set of twins to make them less susceptible to HIV. The experiment was incredibly controversial for reasons I'll come on to in a minute, but it was also incredibly significant. When the twins were born, they became the first gene-edited babies in history. And whilst making soldiers immune to HIV probably wouldn't give them all that much of an edge on the battlefield, there's no reason why we couldn't apply the same cutting-edge technology used by Huang Kui and his team to create other, more drastic modifications to the human genome. Modifications that could conceivably pave the way for real-life super soldiers. The embryos of Huang Kui's HIV-resistant babies were modified using a technology known as CRISPR, which acts like a kind of living, programmable piece of genetic software that can hunt down a specific chunk of DNA, remove it, and replace it with a new custom sequence. This particular method of genome editing was discovered by scientists Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna, earning the pair the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 2020. And there's a very good reason why the research was honoured with science's highest accolade. CRISPR could, quite literally, change what it means to be human. For starters, having the power to edit our genes means we may one day be able to all but eradicate a whole host of diseases, including cancer, cystic fibrosis and Huntington's disease, among many others. And that may well just be the first step on a much longer journey, because eventually we may be able to use CRISPR not only to eliminate undesirable genetic traits, but to actively enhance or introduce desirable ones. So, what would you do if you could bestow any genetic gift you wanted upon your children? If you're a loving parent, perhaps you'd go for genes that would make your child more intelligent or more attractive. Or maybe you'd give them a smattering of the recently identified genes that have been linked to people who earn higher incomes. But, if you were a military leader looking to gain an edge on the battlefield, well, in theory, your options would be limited only by the potential of the human genome itself. To put that another way, you could design a human being that could do anything within the genetic capability of our entire species. Think of it like min-maxing a character in a video game, except you're basically just max-maxing. Gene editing could be the key to faster, stronger, more resilient humans with enhanced intelligence and an increased tolerance for pain. It could be a way to make soldiers bred specifically for high altitude warfare, desert combat, or covert operations. In other words, real life super soldiers. Of course, there's one teeny tiny issue with all of this. Gene editing in humans is an ethical minefield. I mentioned earlier that He Zhang Kui's experiment to produce HIV-resistant babies was controversial. But to tell the truth, I was underselling it a bit. The experiment wasn't just a little bit edgy, it was illegal. Huang Kui wasn't just the first person to create a genetically modified human, he was also the first person to go to jail for it. 
Editing the genes of human embryos is banned pretty much everywhere on the planet, and for good reason. Messing around with the human genome is akin to playing God. And it's safe to say that nobody alive really has the required qualifications for that particular job. If we want to improve our species through genetic enhancement, who gets to decide what counts as an improvement, or which traits need eliminating? You don't have to be a student of history to know that some very, very bad things have been done in the name of one person's idea of genetic superiority. But CRISPR is a technology of such power that we can't simply sweep it under the scientific rug. Much like research into atomic weapons during the Second World War, gene editing is going to happen, no matter how bad it might ultimately turn out to be for us as a species. Genetically modified soldiers could change the face of war forever, allowing world superpowers to breed elite armies that are tougher, stronger, and cleverer than the enemy. And let's face it, as a species, we humans have shown many times that we're willing to pay any price for that kind of power. Okay, so it might sound like I'm getting a bit carried away here, but there's very good reason to believe that several of the world's most powerful militaries are already actively working on the development of so-called super soldiers. According to former US Director of National Intelligence, John Ratcliffe, the Chinese have already reached the human trial stage in their quest to develop soldiers with biologically enhanced capabilities. And as is so often the case when it comes to military technology, when one nation starts, an arms race is triggered, with everyone else jumping on the bandwagon to avoid falling behind. No head of state wants to find themselves in a situation where their normal human soldiers are facing off against 50,000 Captain Americas. Last year, French Minister of the Armed Forces, Florence Parley, confirmed plans to kick off research into genetically enhanced soldiers. And whilst, for obvious reasons, the details as to precisely which other nations are doing exactly what when it comes to gene editing are thin on the ground, it's safe to say that every major military power in the world is, at the very least, exploring the implications. Okay, so does all this mean it's only a matter of time before we start seeing real-life supermen fighting our wars for us? Well, not necessarily. CRISPR gives us the power to edit the human genome with a level of precision that would have seemed practically impossible just a few decades ago. But creating a genetically enhanced super soldier isn't quite so simple as a little DNA cut and paste. The human genome contains around 3 billion base pairs, and the truth is, we quite literally have no idea what the majority of it actually does. I mean, we know it makes us human beings, but exactly which bits do what? What we do know is that most traits are governed by complex relationships between multiple different genes. So it isn't as simple as just finding the muscles gene and replacing it with the absolutely stacked gene. Altering an individual's genetic code is an incredibly complicated business. And with our current level of understanding, there's simply too big a risk of making changes that have unwanted side effects. And I'm not talking about the, ooh, look, he's got superpowers kind of side effects, more the, why isn't he breathing anymore kind. For the time being, gene editing means meddling with powers we simply can't comprehend. There's a very good chance the scientific challenges that stand between us and real-life super soldiers are surmountable. As for how long that will take, well, it's hard to say for sure. But hey, if you happen to spot a seven-foot military-looking type with huge muscles jogging down the street faster than Usain Bolt while simultaneously solving a Sudoku, be sure to let me know. Thanks for watching. And thanks again to Conflict of Nations for sponsoring this video. To help you get on your road to taking over the world, I'm giving my viewers a special gift. 
If you click on the link below, you'll get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. This offer is only available for 30 days, so don't waste any time on your road to victory.